Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I want to show you how I paint the new Derideo Dreadnought for Warhammer Horus Heresy or Warhammer 30k. And uh, the model was kindly sent to me guy by Games Workshop, so thank you so much to those guys. Um, so the original idea I had for this Dreadnought was that I wanted it to be something that was a little bit different to something I have painted before. Uh, while at the same time I wanted to use some of the techniques I have also used on other models like the cross hatching and some of the more sort of small graphic like patterns and I had a model of a Seraphon warrior for Warhammer Age of Sigmar on my desk and it was holding in its hand a sort of Aztec inspired snake banner and I thought wouldn't it be cool if you could sort of translate that to a model for a, a like a sci-fi model like this uh, dreadnought and so I decided that I wanted to try and draw a sort of Aztec serpentine graphic thing <laughs> on uh, on my dreadnought and so I um, sprayed it uh, I primed it white and then I started just painting as you can see here with the uh, drawing with the pencil and drawing in the pattern of a snake and as I said I wanted it to be sort of like a graphic pattern so I'm not trying to make it look like a naturalistic snake or anything uh, which is quite obvious I think and I also wanted the um, it to be sort of divided into small individual um, patterns or like triangles and stuff, uh, both to make it a little bit easier for me to uh, to paint, and also just because I really enjoyed that look. And that was kind of like uh, the way the Seraphon banner also looked, uh, like it was divided into small sort of triangles and shapes. And so I thought it would be fun if I tried to replicate that, but on a like a freehand design on a larger scale on a dreadnought, so that it would be entirely covered with a sort of serpentine. Uh, serpentine designs you might say. So after I was done painting it or drawing it with the pencil I went back over the entire thing with a brush with a bit of black legion on it. This is a contrast paint from Citadel and the reason why I'm sort of repainting the original drawing is just to make sure that when I start filling it out with colors I know exactly where I want each shape to be and where the lines are and it's just a little bit sharper and easier to see when you draw it with a brush than when you draw it with a pencil. Of course also pencil lines can be sort of smeared with your hand uh, so I just wanted to make sure I knew exactly what I was gonna do. Then I started painting in or filling it in with colors and this feels like it's sort of like a coloring book or something uh, and I quite enjoy that that part of the painting process to me is sort of almost like meditation and I am uh, painting here with a color called Raging Sea. It's one of the uh, Speed Paints 2.0 from the Army Painter. I bought the entire set and I really wanted to try them out. So I'm using a couple of those here in this uh, painting process. And I actually gotta say, I, I quite enjoyed these paints. I think they just work really well and do exactly what I want them to do, uh, which is fill in uh, some... Um, some armor panels here uh, in quite a short amount of time and I wanted to fill it out in just one go and that's exactly what they're doing here. Then the uh, for the other color I'm using a paint called Moon Lake Coral uh, which is also one of the speed paints from Army Painter. So um, as you can see here I'm using sort of a bluish turquoise color and then a more um, purple pink color and that's just because I mean I really like these two colors and so I thought that would work well and also because that is the colors I used for the banner on my Seraphon Warrior and I just really like that so I thought why not just go with that. Then after I was done with the sort of paint by numbers part of the painting process I grabbed two fluorescent colors, uh, a blue and a, a green, and both are from Huge Miniatures. The blue is called Blaster Blue and the green is called Gamma Green. And I mixed them up into a nice uh, turquoise color. It's a little bit more vibrant in real life than it shows up here on the footage. And then I used that just as you can see to do... Um, well, it's not exactly an edge highlight, but it's the exact same method. So sort of like um, just a lighter um, border of color all around each of the um, turquoise shapes and after I was done with that I thought it needed a little bit more to make it pop a bit more so I grabbed a green color and this one is called uh, quantum green it's also from huge miniatures and it's also a fluorescent paint and I used that just to retrace the original highlight 
only as you can see I tried to do it just a little bit more sparingly so that you get the idea that some part of the triangles or the shapes are a little bit lighter than others so to make it visually a little bit more interesting and make it look like perhaps some uh, it's not naturalistic of course but some sort of stylistic representation of light and shadow and then lastly I use a little bit of a color called Starfire Yellow which is also a fluorescent paint from Huge Miniatures. It's sort of a very nice light uh, yellow color and I use that just on the tip of each of the shapes. Then for the pink or purple part of the design I use the exact same technique only of course different colors. And the first highlight color I'm using here is also from Huge Miniatures and it's again a fluorescent paint and it's called a pulse wave pink. As you can probably already tell by now I want this design to be really vibrant and really sort of popping and eye-catching and also uh, quite bright but um, to me it's a little bit important that you use a darker color at the sort of at the first level with the contrast paint or the speed paints here just to make sure that you can actually get a nice contrast between the uh, sort of middle layer of colors and then the highlights otherwise I think it tends to um, become a little bit muddy and a little bit unclear what you are doing and for a very graphic design such as this I think clarity is quite important. Then the last layer of highlights that you can see me applying here is also a pink color and it's called Cyber Pink. Next up I again grab the Black Legion contrast paint and I again for the third time <laughs> retrace the original sort of drawing or a design. Um, like at first I painted it with the uh, or drew it with the pencil then I went over it with the brush and now I'm going over it with the brush once more. And that is simply to make sure that I get the lines as clear and as exact as I possibly can so that I don't have like a little bit of green color touching the um, pink color and uh, vice versa of course and as I said that's because I really want to make sure when you do something like this I think if the sharper you can get it the more precise you can make the lines and uh, the better it works the better the overall impression is because I'm going to be using a lot of bright colors and perhaps a little bit conflicting colors almost on this piece and so I want to make sure I can give give it as much clarity and as much precision as I possibly can to make sure that it I think it looks nice. Again, I mean, you can always do even more, but I think um I think this this works well enough at least. Then for the sort of background color, I am using a contrast paint called Baal Red, which is from Citadel. And usually I would sort of fill in the bigger um spaces with paint before I started working on something like a uh, uh, like these graphic uh, designs uh, that are very time consuming and that will take a lot of time to clean up if I mess up this step with all the uh, background color. Um, but because I wanted to start with a freehand drawing I felt like I needed the uh, blank canvas of just the white primed model and so that's why I did it this way around. And I also wanted to make sure because I've never tried this color scheme or these techniques uh, next to each other before. So I wanted to make sure I knew what I was working with and so I decided to just draw like finish this snake pattern first and then uh, sort of make sure that I could uh, do something something with a background that would fit so I wasn't my mind wasn't completely made up uh, as to how I wanted to make the background before I actually finished the snake. So uh, then I started just to do some cross hatching you can see I'm drawing diagonal lines and I'm drawing uh, or painting them with a fluorescent red paint which is called radar red also from huge miniatures and you can see it's just diagonal lines that I'm sort of crisscrossing across each other and I'm calling it like so it's like cross hatching that you usually see on uh, for instance drawings uh, and I like to use these for making a more graphic representation of light and shadow if that makes sense. Then for the first layer of highlights I'm using a color which is a, an orange color and it's much more vibrant in real life than it shows up here on camera. It's also from Huge Miniatures and it's called Laser Orange. And again you can see I'm using the same cross hatching technique as I did with the red paint. And as you can see I'm trying to get my lines to be quite thin just because I think that they tend to look a little bit it looks a little bit rough if some of the lines get too thick but on the other hand it's 
you need i mean you need to be a little bit careful when you do this if you want them to be very nice and fine uh, because it's quite tricky to go back over something like this and and um sort of retrace your steps you need to then paint in the background first and everything so that takes quite a while so just try to be as neat as you can and may, i mean you're probably going to cover them up either way even if you make mistakes so it's not a big deal it's just something to think about then uh, the last layer of highlights is just some flash kits yellow from citadel a completely ordinary paint this isn't fluorescent or anything and that's because the only yellow fluorescent paint i have is the one that i used for highlighting the green or turquoise parts on the snake and i thought i wanted something that looked a little bit warm for the background because both of the color tones on the snake are a little bit colder so i thought the flash kits yellow as a nice warm uh, yellow would work a little bit better to make sure you have both um, the sort of sense of uh, yeah, uh, cool and, and warm colors uh, because that just it's just nice on a, a model if you can go with both cold and warm colors and you have a bit of different textures and stuff and um, at least I, I, I quite like that. Then my original idea was just to leave it like this uh, because I thought I liked the colors and it looked quite cool. Um, but then I decided that the snake was just a little bit... I mean, it's not like it's not visible because it is, but I just wanted to make sure that it would stand out just a little bit more. So I went back over the entire thing with the orange paint, the laser orange, and I just redrew sort of a... A lighter outline around where you have the dark outline first. So I thought, um, I just thought that would make the snake pop a little bit more and make sure that it would look just a little bit sharper. Then once I was done with that and thought, now it's done, I decided I just wanted to highlight uh, some uh, some parts of the orange outline with a bit of the flash kits yellow to make sure that again it really popped and it was really easy to see what was happening even though the whole thing is also i mean i don't know if, if you would exactly call it messy but it's a little bit but well, it's very busy let's be honest and uh, so i just wanted to make it as um easy to read or to decipher what was going on as i possibly could and so i thought that the uh, a touch of yellow here and there on the orange outline would probably help you uh, help me achieve that uh, just a little bit I then decided that while I wanted most of the models to be covered in these serpentine designs and with the sort of orangey background, I also wanted some parts of the armor panels, particularly those that were sort of placed a little bit below and the upper parts of the panel. I don't know if you can see it here in this video, but this part that I'm painting gray now is just situated a tiny bit below uh, the colored part. And so I thought, um, those sections on the model I want to have in some very desaturated, well, colors or, well, perhaps you might not even call them colors, like black, gray and white, basically, um, to make sure that um, the orangey parts really stand out. I thought if I painted them, the whole model, uh, like um, turquoise, pink and orange, perhaps it would sort of drown itself out a little bit so I just decided to uh, have some panels that were also gray then I I actually didn't want to do anything more with the um, orangey parts of the model but then I really thought it looked just not shabby but slightly it's uh, just slightly not as sharp as I wanted it to look so I went back over the whole thing with the radar red um, paint from huge miniatures and drew a, well, it, I guess it's sort of an edge highlight all around every single armor panel. And I kind of hated myself for getting this idea because this was a painting project that had already at this point taken much, much longer than I originally thought it would. Um, but now I really wanted it just, you know, to see it through to the end. So um, yeah, that's what I did. Then I grabbed a black uh, paint. This one is called Grim Black. It's also one of the speed paints. And then I did, did the cross hatching again, like I did before. And this time I'm trying to draw in some shadows. And you'll probably notice that some of the black lines here were, were just a little bit rough. Um, but I mean, since I'm painting over the entire thing with more texture and stuff, I don't think it matters too much. And sometimes when you're painting, at least, 
for me, I got to tell myself, okay, this is good enough. This is fine. Uh, you don't need perfection in every single thing you do, because if you go for that, you're never ever going to be able to finish just a single model. And since I do want, you know, finished models and painted models on the tabletop and stuff, um, perhaps that's simply not the way to go. For the highlight color on the gray parts of the model, I used first a color from uh, Vallejo called Steel Gray. And as you can see, again, I'm just doing the cross-hatching designs. Uh, I think, I mean, they look a little bit silly, I know, but I just, I, there's just something about painting like this that makes me happy. And painting is, after all, all about making, you know, making art and having fun and doing stuff that you enjoy. And I really enjoy painting cross-hatching for some reason. Uh, cross-hatching and edge highlighting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm weird. I, I know. <laughs> and uh, for the last layer of highlights, I used another paint from Vallejo. And this one is called Glacier Blue. It's not quite white. I know it looks white on the footage, but it's not quite white. It's sort of a very cold, um, almost like light blue gray color. I decided I didn't want anything on this model to be pure white. I thought that would perhaps um, take a little bit uh, of the attention away from the more brightly se colored sections on the models and that's uh, where I wanted your eyes to be drawn to so I just refrained from using white which is a little bit weird for me because I also often uh, paint um, just a dab of white for instance in the highlights on the purple parts of any model I paint but I've refrained from using white here on this model and I'm very proud it was very difficult <laughs> then um, I also did an edge highlight uh, around the gray uh, panels on the armor uh, with the steel gray as you can see here just to make sure that uh, sort of the painting technique uh, matched what I had done on the colored sections of the model and lastly, I used a little bit of the Glacier Blue from Vallejo to just do a little bit of uh, an extra highlight at uh, some of the uh, corners here on the armor panels to make them not exactly pop perhaps, but again to make them a little bit easier to read perhaps. So here you can see the finished model. And as I said, this took a long time to make. Um, and I mean... I won't say that I quite like this. I think it's cool and I think it's fun and I'm really happy with the final results. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure if it was actually worth it with that amount of freehand designs on a single miniature, just because I think I have maybe spent 70 hours painting this thing. And it's after all, it's not a night or anything. It's just a dreadnought and it's not for a painting competition. It's just something I painted for fun. So perhaps uh, I've, it was slightly overdone, <laughs> uh, but I had a lot of fun painting it. And I really, really like the idea of combining the cross hatching with the more graphic uh, patterns. I've never really used those two um, painting techniques side by side. And I really think it works well. Uh, so I really enjoyed it and it was very fun. And of course, uh, as you can see here, I used a lot of fluorescent paints. So it glows under a UV light. Um, it would perhaps have been slightly better if I had used a... Um, well, not if I hadn't used the flash kits yellow as the final highlight on the orange parts, but I just really enjoyed the warm color. So there you go. And uh, there isn't that much of a flashy yellow color. It's just the red and orange that you can see here. On the other hand, it really does actually <laughs> light up the room if you uh, use a UV light. So, I mean, it's still he's still ready for a rave party, right? So, um, yeah. Uh, that was uh, that was one of what I wanted to show you uh, in this video. But before you leave, I would just really like to take the opportunity to thank the wonderful people who support Dyson Demons over on Patreon. So thank you so much to Thomas Masson, Scott Broadway, Gwena L, Queen's Wolf, Double J's Terrain, Mola Mola, TJ Kubiak, Mando Project, Starcon 85, S Bear, Echinococcus, Firelord 21 and Elliot Philby. If you want to join these wonderful people, you can do so over at my Patreon and I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. If you want to buy some uh, fluorescent paints from Huge Miniatures, I have a 5% off discount code that I will also leave in the show notes. And if you use that, that will also help support this channel. If you want to uh, stay up to date on my painting projects, you can do so over at X, formerly known as Twitter, or on Instagram, where you can find me as Dyson Demons. So I really hope you like this video. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future projects and so on, please leave that in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.